Here we see a crack commando unit of highly trained engineers in their natural habitat. Completely immersed in modern video games in a world that does not respect their intelligence and ingenuity for solving major problems. We now see a product engineer play. Hang on. Never mind, let's skip this one and move to the software engineer. This engineer seems to know what he is doing. Never mind, this is a lost cause as well. Reworld. So Reworld is this game and game engine studio where you can make your own games. You can program your own stuff and you upload it and you can put it out in the public or just for yourself it looks like. Um, and it's kind of just a, a game where you can you can look at like the game and the engine together as like the sandbox in that you can program like whatever you want to make and then uh, play it, whatever that is. Um, and there's some other similar games out there uh, that are kind of similar, but I mean, we'll just look at one of these templates here. And okay. So I know we there's a couple games that are online that you can try and play. We are having extreme difficulty opening them on the computer mm -hmm. and on our Android devices. So we figured we'd just go in and just make a simple game right yeah. now. Yeah, that's right. And, and so the thing about ReWorld is... Um, uh, you can just, we can just upload any of these. It's, it's a pretty new game, so there's not a whole lot out there. Like like he's, like Michael said, we were having a lot of issues uh, running them, but uh, I'm just going to try loading one of these. And so, so this is the editor, and it's basically like, it's similar to like any game engine, but it, it, get, it does a lot of the first, uh, what's the word for it? Like a lot of the boilerplate of a game engine, it just like does that for you. So you kind of have a template of where to start. And it's supposed to have an API, which is basically like a programming framework, if you will, uh, that will make it like easier for me to make stuff. So I mean, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit play here. Like so you so you got the basic framework of a game. There's a couple different templates for you to choose from. Right. He hit go, and right now it's asking us to select a team. Yeah. So it looks like I mean I don't know what the template is called, but it looks like it's a police versus okay it looks like others can join I'm not sure how we can I'm not sure if we can do that uh, so oh okay <laughs> all right it works so <laughs> essentially we haven't actually created anything yet we've just clicked on the template right so uh, yeah this is just given to you by default. <laughs> it's actually it's pretty cool actually and I got a grenade too it looks like See what the explosion. Is. <laughs> okay, so I ran. It looks like my grenade is gone. So now I only have this. I can reload too. And it's a pretty, pretty, pretty fluid animation there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so maybe. So here's what I'm thinking: is maybe I can. Why don't I get this published? Right. We can set up maybe on your phone or something. You can join after I publish this like publicly as a game or something. Okay, and so, see if we can get it to work? Yeah, so let's go ahead and... So, if I can... I'm not sure how to unlock my cursor here. But I want to unlock my <laughs> cursor so I can stop playing, right? <laughs> you are forced to play until you have lost. Listen to that sound. It's <laughs> a great sound. Huh. Where's my cursor? Okay, so right oh, off I can the bat... I can hit alt escape. <laughs> Right off the bat, I want to say the the walls, the building, sort of gives me a very Minecraft type vibe, but the character is very much like a Lego character, Lego Playmobil type character. I love the way this looks, and that jump sound is great. Yeah, this is just that's just great. That's excellent. So, still having to, so what I might do is just close the engine, but I really I'm really curious to find if there's like. A okay. default menu button. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you move your cursor up to the? Uh, well, I can hit Alt Escape, and then I can hit the I can hit the bar, but I like. The, I can't but you hit can't the hit the button. settings button. I can't stop, right. 
No, so usually there will be like an unlock cursor button, like it's usually like or something, right? Or escape. So, I mean, really, uh... I apologize for his loud keyboard clacking. I know some of you don't like that very yeah, much. everybody hates me for my keyboard. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just close this and we'll just open it again. Real world engine here. So, um... So yeah, okay, so I'm, I think what I'm gonna do is save that template and then, um, and then I'll just publish it. Let's see if I can do that. So there's just a publish button here somewhere. Yeah, publish. Uh, okay, so I can make a new map. I'll just call this like, what is this? Gangsters, gangsters police. Yep. Yeah, okay, so then introduction. Game tag, uh, warfare. Okay, so yeah, look. I wonder what. I have a lot of stuff in here. Sci-fi would be cool. Uh, okay, so I can just make this public. Okay, so you can up. change it from PC and or phone. Yeah, we could. Uh, yeah, we can see if it'll. I have no idea what'll happen if it's on the phone. <laughs> I, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, so I guess we'll see. I'm just gonna upload some some game icon here. Because you, you have to upload a thumbnail to uh, publish it. So hopefully I'm not polluting the, <laughs> the <laughs> marketplace with this nonsense thumbnail. Uh, okay, so I'm going to upload. Oh, confirm. The text you enter contains sensitive map. Which? What? Uh, is it gangsters? Text you enter contains sensitive characters. Which text? Uh, just, like, uh, right I don't know. Let's just do this game. Does this work? Map nice description. description. Okay. Here's here's a description. Here's a description. <laughs> yeah. I can try it. Oh, there we go. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the developers are gonna hate us. Uh, again, I go back to the the intro. Uh, some highly skilled engineers <laughs> were being tripped up by this. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you can hit F five to play. So I wonder if hitting F five would like exit the next time I try it. So now that I have so it published, you've published it, so I should be able to find it now too, right? Yes. Uh, so we can just show like the phone if you find it. But I I can just pull over a tab over here too. So if I go to Real World, uh, pull this over here. Uh, I think it's what is it? Play dot or is it games dot dot io. Play or something. No, play dot reworld. Hey, it's there. So I simply searched for. It. Can you bring back the screen so I can see what we're looking at? Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, go ahead. All right. So I simply searched for a. <laughs> for a. Ooh, ooh. Simply searched Bilal, and Bilal's game came up, the one we just made. So I think is that. Oh yeah, that is. I hit enter, and comes up like this. And just hit play down at the bottom. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, so let me see if I can find it. I'm just gonna load it, load it, load it. whatever it's called. So it's it's just running through its loading screen. Oh, it's game.reworld.io. Okay, so I got this here now. Uh, okay. Okay, I shall choose gangster. If you want to choose policeman. Okay, so Michael's got it open. I'm gonna hope, I'm gonna go ahead and search on the. So this is kind of the marketplace for the entire. Okay, so I got an error. It it all right. This this is sort of what I'm seeing here. Uh, it takes a while for all of the images to load. Yeah. Uh, my camera's kind of messed up, but oh oh, that's reload. I think that's it's just an over the shoulder view. You might be able to customize it. So let me try pulling it up here. Maybe they can see better. Excuse me. Interesting. I'm like, oh, all right. This is, it's kind of fun. Oh, you, you joined. I I'm guess. in? Yeah, you're, I'm loaded. You're still. In okay. So I joined as a gangster. Or did you join it? I, I I'm in place? as a gangster. Oh, I'm a police. Oh, oh I've, I've been, what, what just happened? Uh, I think it just reset because I, I think a round started because I got put in. He's oh, got a timer. okay. Yep. So, I've got a timer up at the top. Okay. All right. yeah, so which which way did you run around? I'm on the. I think I'm on the left side. Okay. 
Stop moving so I can try and find you. I went around the other way. Okay. Oh, oh, nice. you. Ah! Alright, so. The police win! Oh. Got tier gaming right here, right? So. Okay, okay, and then it resets in the next round. Okay, that was. So we didn't actually make the game. That was purely. And, right, but... What if I. I want to try to go down. <laughs> oh no. Did I blow you up? Where'd you go? Ah! <laughs> okay. I can't. I actually need to look at your screen to try and see what you're seeing because it's really difficult. Is to it hard find. to see from there? Yeah. It's it's not hard to see. It's just I'm not ready for it. Uh. Okay. Well, I could. Okay. So I'm curious about this developer console, but it's forcing me into this. Okay. Don't shoot me for once. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me. Let me. How many times do I have to shoot you for it to do something? Uh, I don't think it might help, but, I mean, I'm bleeding, so you're hitting me, but, I mean, here, kill me. Hey! Okay, yeah, the, I don't know how to unlock the cursor, but when I die, it unlocks, so it looks like there's, like, a developer console here, uh, and I see my cursor's locked again, so, that's a little bit annoying. So, uh, should we, uh, go ahead and just try to customize this a bit? See yeah, we oh. I guess we can, oh, okay, we're back into another round. Yeah. I so mean, what I, what I do really like is that you and I can play cross-platform. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna, that doesn't, didn't even damage me really. <laughs> Hey! Sometimes I win. Like, yeah. Sometimes my uh, thing gets a little bit messed up, so like I have to hold right click to like move my camera. Okay. Around. So I guess do we want to try the grenades? See what those do. Sure. You want to come catch a grenade? We can catch a grenade together. Oh, you just dropped it right there. <laughs> yeah, just accept. It. <laughs> if we both blow up and I, you, I win. <laughs> However, it's closer to it gets hit first, I guess, right? Cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, do we want to... Let's, let's see if we can just do some customization here. Because I can't really click any any of the UI stuff, because, like, how do I unlock my cursor? Small lock, caps lock, maybe? Yeah, it only unlocks when I die. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and see, like what we can change here because there's like there's an API and there's like you have to understand exactly how the structure of the platform is set up because it's a question of what I'm actually programming so I'm not sure yeah so here it looks like there's a class name here folder so I'm trying to just understand the structure here so there's like a documentation API reference here information for everyone else I have absolutely no idea what any of that stuff on the screen really means. I've done basic programming in programming for like Autodesk of like rotating line segments and stuff in a 3D space. Uh -huh. uh, more math based programming that has absolutely no correlation to any of this. <laughs> so what's interesting is that this claims to have classes, player jump which I didn't realize Lua supported classes. Unless ReWorld API has its own like created class system. Oh, and it's cool. They have everything in here. They have a UI system. They have uh, they have events where you can listen to an event here on health change. I'm trying to think of what a very simple thing to change would be. I mean, perhaps we can just, maybe we can make just a literal stop. Can you make the uh, grenade explode bigger? So it has damage at a larger range? So I'm trying to figure out where you actually write code in this. I'm just going to take a look around here. I see a start guide here. Import publish toolbar. So I'm just now looking around to see if there's a place where I can go ahead and write code in. Because uh, a lot of this is just moving objects around, but I'm trying to understand how I can program them. Okay, so I can edit the properties on something. So I'm going to see the start. Yeah, here we go. Starter player scripts. I'm not sure what that icon is there. If I just click on things, I can see what scripts are attached to them. I'm assuming maybe maybe you attach scripts to things. So I'm kind of going into this blind, so I don't really know what to expect. Performance script. So you can add a script here. Okay. So you can add a script to stuff. Take a round. 
What? Take a rap. So when you yeah. gotten destroyed yeah. by a nice rap? <laughs> Starter player scripts. Okay. Player operations script. Disable climb. Script. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Ah, they got zero zero brain studio. Okay. This is custom logic. The first piece of custom logic that I've seen here. Set avatar state enabled climbing false. Okay, so when you start. So this is just a quick tweak to turn something off. So I think all the scripts I can't take a look at are just like internal already created scripts that are not customized uh, and just added on top. Oh, here we go. Here's a grenade. Uh, here's a bunch of scripts. The grenade looks like bro. This is an animation. Okay. Automatic rifle. Assault rifle. Mouse four fire or M4. Oh, it's an M4. I see. I thought that was mouse four. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to see where Oh, the last client script. Interesting. Oh, that's not English. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it is not. So let me just go out there, venture on a limb here and say that someone that does not program on a regular basis, I would have no idea what I'm looking at at this point. Yes. Um, it, it looks like it's made to be user-friendly, so there are labels, there are things, but once you get down into it, it's still something not super beginner basic friendly. Yeah, and I'm not sure if there, it seems to me that it's a, I mean, let's, why don't we take a look at the guide and API again, because it looks to me that it's mostly um, supposed to be a Lua, yeah, so a Lua library. I'm not seeing any type of visual programming, which obviously has a learning curve, considering Lua, Lua is a, like, functional programming language. It's used in a lot of like games for UI development, like uh, Elder Scrolls Online, I think World of Warcraft. They let you write UI scripts in Lua. And so there's a bit of a learning curve, but it's one of the easier languages to learn in my opinion. Maybe I should start with like a different map because like this is gonna lock my camera. This is a bit complex. I'm gonna go with a new map here. Terrain empty plate, that might, that might work. Yeah, okay, so let's, let's see if we can find the roadster again. There it is. Um, can you add a simple, like, large diameter circle for, like, the car to race around? Potentially. Mm, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure how, but let's see. I figure maybe within that ad, you just click a few times, add a couple, I guess, pylons or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. So just, like, do something like this. Oh. Is this adding... Yeah, that's a physical object. Let's change the material to something else. Ah, oh, oh, that's cool. It like builds on top of itself. So we can just do something like, does this work? Yeah, as long as you leave enough of an opening for the car to get out. Right, yeah. So what, a circle like this? Yep, sir, with, with an opening. You, you, you. Like this? And, uh, yes. Yep, leave it like that. <laughs> something like that. Sure. Alright, we should try that. I have, well, yeah, I have no, I don't think the car has any sort of movement script yet, so let's see. Is there a simple way that I can make the camera follow it? What happens if I play, actually? I guess the camera is just gonna, yeah, so, it, uh, oh, 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 wait. It, oh, there you go. So, like, oh, the car does work. Oh, okay, that's easy. It has crazy good steering, not much roadster speed. Maybe we can change the properties, like speed. Maybe these, do these have the speed on them? Size, physics, split joint, what is this for? Vehicle C, oh, oh, here we go. I'm just trying to see what everything is here. I'm gonna say, this is a lot of reverse engineering at this point. Yeah, so what if I, I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm just gonna take a look in the hierarchy of this roadster, see if I can figure out what's going on. There is, there's a little physics option here, and I think that this is just So I guess here, velocity. hit publish real quick on this. And then I'll pull it up on my phone and start seeing what I can do. Okay. And then if it works, then you can join. We can have a race around the circle, see who makes it there first. Sure. Um, we're starting to run out of time, but we at least wanted to make like a very basic game. Just so you guys can see, you can make something very quickly without looking too deeply into anything. Let's just go with the same thumbnail here. Okay. Map tag. Okay, so this is like racing. Uh, sports. Sports simulation? Uh, sure. We'll put on yeah, sports. sports. Just sports. Alrighty. Alright, now I'll go we back to start checking phone. it out. I'm gonna see if I can write some basic code or something. Oh, we can change the appearance pretty easily too here. Uh, 
Oh, what did you just call it? Uh, it's like racing or something. I might have, maybe I... Let's make it public oops. Uh, yeah, that might help. Okay, should have fixed that. Uh, okay, so the cool thing is right at the bottom, it actually shows me my speed. Oh, okay. There is a speed down at the bottom. Wow, reflection. <laughs> so the camera you currently have to spin yourself. Okay. Can you make it follow, I guess, somehow? Maybe. Nope, it actually does do it it's itself. Oh, yeah? It just it just takes a second for it to... Yeah, so it, it, I'm definitely amazed at the graphics behind it already is really good. You're able to drag and drop stuff in and sort of... It's sort of built by blocks. It's fairly easy to drop stuff in and change some things. As like a first look at it, it's a little difficult. There's a kind of a steep learning curve to get things to change. Okay, so I traveled into the future for the sole purpose of getting rid of Michael so that I could focus uh, and actually get something out here, right? So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do here is I actually want to I'm going to do some more experiments with printing stuff because I wanted to get more of the point across about the event-based kind of system and how how you can make certain things happen when there's an action that happens inside of the game. So I'm going to open uh, the menu here and you'll notice that you can actually pick from in the view here, you can actually add all these different panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Im uh, enable the script output log, which is essentially just to show some logs from what's actually being done. So if I want to print something, I can see them here instead of having to jump into the console like we were trying earlier. So what I'm going to do is, I think the first thing I want to show you is that the game has just this, some objects here that are going to do uh, you know, whatever it is on the beginning of the game or just throughout the game's life cycle. Um, so if I open this, if I click on this client first logic uh, object, and uh, if I just add like a Lua local script, it's pretty easy to start with just programming some random thing. So I want to just take some focus off of exactly, you know, making complex stuff and just focus on the fundamental of being able to program something. Again, I can click on the file path here on the right. I see that there's already a print hello reworld script in here, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and close this. Add this, I've added this little local script and I'm gonna hit play. And you'll notice like right off the bat here, you see that it printed hello reworld for me. Again, that's because this is just happening like right at the beginning. Oh, and here we have a scoreboard and all that backpack. So anyway, that, that was the main thing I wanted to get across here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to do stuff that's a little bit more interesting, right? So I'm going to go ahead and open this local script. Uh, you can also just double click on it like that. And what I'm going to do now, because this is basically what it means to program, is I'm going to pull open a Chrome tab. I'm going to do some searching on the syntax of Lua. Right, because a lot of people have this misconception that when you're programming, you just you've memorized certain programming languages. But the reality is, once you know how to program, you can figure out how to use any language. And when you stop using a language, you will forget the syntax. But you might remember certain quirks about different languages because, for the most part, a, a, like most languages can get the same jobs done. But there's a lot of languages that there are some languages that are very different and very niche that are for certain things. But there's always a benefit to using one language over the other for certain things. At least that's the idea, right? <laughs> Unless there's a useless language. Anyway, I, I'm. I'm going off on a rant here, but let me do some searching, right? So like Lua, let's do a for loop, right? So in Lua, or in any language, you can do a loop that does something over a period of iterations. So in Lua, we can just do a for loop that will run for, let's say, 10 iterations, and we can just print it. So this website <laughs> formatting is bothering me, so I'm gonna go to this one instead. And here we go, it says for an initial value to a maximum and minimum value increment. So here's what we can do, right? I'm going to say, I'm going to make an initial value, initial value, I believe I can just write like this in Lua, equals 10. I forget if I need to write something beforehand or not because it's been a long time since I've gotten into Lua. So I can say like, oh, well here, let's make the initial value zero. Let's do, let's make the end value or I guess this is the number of, is this really the max or min? Let's, yeah, let's just say 10. So we're gonna end at 10. So 
what we're going to do here is i equals the initial value. Uh, we're going to say the end value is what we're approaching. And then we'll say increment by equals one, right? So we're trying to go up by one every round, right? So here we have, we're going to start at an initial value. We're going to end at an end value, which is 10. So we're going from zero to 10. And each iteration will be an iteration of one. It will, it will increment the initial value by one. And we'll see that in I, right? So hopefully if I save this and I hit play, we should see that just at the very beginning. And so we do see zero, one, two, three, four, and all the way to 10, right? And so the reason that that looks like it printed instantly is because I have the best computer. No, is because uh, that this kind of logic happens on the same frame. Essentially, the game will freeze until this loop is over, in theory, uh, unless there's some complex logic there, but that's usually the situation. And we can test that if I threw 100 in here, maybe? Let's see what happens. So if I save that and play, we should see, yep, it froze for a sec there and then threw 100 in there. So there are ways around that I'm not going to go into in this video. What I want to show here is that a lot of people get confused with like with uh, using a new tool or something and they think, well, I don't know how to program outside of this tool. I only know how to program inside of the tool. But realistically, this is Lua with added features. So you can make whatever basic Lua logic you want to happen in here happen, and it will just cooperate with the game's system. I want to show that off a little bit. I'm going to try to add a roadster to see if if that can help get the point across again. Let's see if I can add an asset again. We, yeah, the, ro the roadster is still here. Let's see how we can... How do I drag him in? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> so I've added a roadster. Uh, in theory, I can just play, and what happened is I should be able to just jump, jump on into it. Yep. And all of a sudden, I'm driving with absolutely perfect uh, <laughs> handling. Oh, can we top? What does this do? Oh, it turns me around. That's cool. Look at that. At least I think I think that's what. Anyway, uh, so I'm gonna stop getting distracted. So what I want to do here is see if I can uh, just hop into this this uh, roadster here and access one of these scripts that's doing something more interesting than what I was doing. And yeah, I really just want to see on enter drive state callback here. Okay, so maybe I can just print avatar dot and, and you can see here that there's a lot of suggestions and that's just because of the, the nature of how there's some kind of, there's a, some typing here that lets me figure out what exists. This is always nice to have documentation like this so that you can read whatever it is you want or you can you can find whatever it is you want just by exploring here and that's what's pretty interesting about reworld is that it can be a nice way to explore while you're learning programming so you're kind of both exploring programming and this interesting um, essentially game engine or game combined so it lets you do a lot of fun with exploration here so i'm going to try to print an angle here Let's just see what that is. And most likely that's the angle of rotation of the car, but you never know, right? <laughs> Maybe what I'll first do is disable this uh, script that's, this literal lag script that's just printing a hundred things. I'm just gonna delete this. I'll save this as my race. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's just try that again. You still got that amazing jump noise. Um, and yeah, when I got in, it said zero. Does it change when I, I believe that, uh, I hope that's printing zero. Let's say, so what I'm gonna do here is just put a quick prefix on it so that I can be sure that uh, which part is actually the angle itself. And I believe it's just zero, so I think it's just always printing zero. Oh, uh, maybe I need to do a two string. I'm not sure about Lua. Yeah, so Lua to string and not complicated then. Okay, so it looks like we just do, we just call the function itself here. So you can call to string on the whole thing. And in theory, this will work, but you no, know, let's see. To string, okay. And I think this is actually lowercase. I'm gonna pull the car over to this side because I'm doing the same thing a lot. But, you know, arithmetic on a string value. So, you know, I don't know. Combine strings, uh, Lua. <laughs> string concatenation by two dots. So what, do I do two dots like this? Yeah, there we go, and so the angle is zero. It looks like the angle is always zero, and whatever that reason is, is it might have something to do with just I have to be moving or something, so it's just, because I, I don't really know what it is. So we can, but that's what's kind of interesting here is that 
I can just keep trying to figure out like some interesting things to look at here. Like you can get player ID. One thing we could do is use this. Players that, well actually, well here, so it's getting the player already here. So why don't we just try printing the player's name, right? Player's gotta have a name. And I don't need, do I not, I don't need semicolons in this language. <laughs> Yeah, so if I go in, you'll see that it's printing my name here uh, when I enter the vehicle. I wonder if there's any other interesting player functions, like let's see, player dot start spawn, remove team, destroyed, avatar, player dot avatar dot. And you know, so there's a lot of different things that could happen. So I mean, one thing I could do is go to the reworlds documentation and see if one of those things will work. So. Again, a lot of this, a lot of the job is doing this uh, when you're programming. So, reworld documentation. Here I can. It looks like we have avatar. We got. Do we have player somewhere? We have game me mechanics and then player. So here's what we saw before: name, class name, control type. We got a team. We got functions. Okay. So there's jump, leave team, remove avatar. I mean, I wonder what remove avatar does. If it does anything. So player dot remove avatar when I enter the vehicle. Let's see if that does something. Bad argument, RW object got nil. Or what if we do avatar? We can go back to the docs and look at avatar. And we got destroy. I mean, maybe I can do avatar dot destroy. Delete the self object server and client accessible. Okay. Sorry, I keep putting semicolons in there. It's just C, a lot of C sharp. <laughs> Which one is, I wonder, destroy, delete objects, temp1.destroy. For a function, is that the way that you access a function? Ah, hey! Okay, so I killed myself. Hopefully this gets the point across of what, what's happening here. To recap, we saw that we could open the script output log here, and that's kind of how you do a lot of programming, is you implement something, you put about a bunch of logs in it so you can figure out what you're gonna read and you look up documentation along the way to figure out how to do all of that. So what we did here was I went and found documentation to get the player's name and destroy the player. I printed the player's name in the, in the console here when the game started and I did it by putting it in some event-based areas and just really exploring. So you want to get familiar with a an environment, which is what you could call reworld is some form of environment which lets you create stuff and play stuff. You want to get familiar with it and see what you can do and once you know once you have some general understanding of what you can do you go in and then you look up documentation you try stuff out you print stuff and uh, you know eventually you get a, a completed um, project or in this case a game. But yeah with that um, let's get back to uh, the past what, what are your thoughts of this right now? Does this have potential? I th think so. I, I, I think what I mostly was impressed by was I like how as soon as I get in, I can see the game has, you can tell the game has some pretty high quality shading. Um, whereas if you look at a game like Roblox, for example, to be quite frank, it doesn't look at it all in comparison. Because Roblox, like you see these plasticky characters that don't really have good animation and the game is just really outdated. Uh, what I like about this is the fact that one, we, de we deployed really fast, we threw it onto the marketplace and we were able to open it on our phones and in the end in the end on my computer and it worked instantly, which is impressive actually. It's not a that's that is that is amazing. You hit publish and within about 10 seconds, I could open it up on my phone. Yeah, and that was and that's very impressive because I mean that's that's not easy to do, right? For any 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 piece of software. So like the fact that that's already working to me is pretty you know that's already a really um, really impressive. It's good that they picked a language like Lua. It's easier to get into. I see a lot of potential behind this. Mm -hmm. um, there might be some work that needs to be done. Right. Most likely, probably on our end, just to. Really, really dive deep into it to figure out how to actually work with it. Yeah, but I think it, I think it really is interesting, and I'd like to make. I'm curious to try and actually make a game in it, but um, it's gonna take a while to go through the documentation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 
that's kind of what a lot of this is, though. It, it could be a really good way to learn programming, it, and not just programming, because a lot of software engineering is also like knowing your way around, like, uh, let's say the workplace, if you will, whether that's like yeah. soft skills or like looking at documentation or figuring out what somebody else's code actually does. Yep. Uh, that's a lot of what it is. You write stuff in, you read a lot, and then you you press play a lot, right? You <laughs> need to see to see what'll happen when you run your yeah. code. So Okay. Yeah, so I think this is this is definitely great. Looks great and I'm definitely curious to see what, what else we can do in it. Yeah, I'm very excited to uh, to make something. Maybe we'll do like a Pac Man game or something. Yeah. So, so uh, this was your uh, probably a first look into ReWorld and We'll see what else we can make in it in the future. Yep. Make sure to check it out. Yeah. Definitely look it up.